In section 4.8, we will talk about L'Hopital's rule and when to use it. So when we do direct substitution and we get the limit in the format of 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity or any of those uh, iterations of infinity over infinity, then these limits cannot be determined as they are indeterminate forms. So when we have 0 over 0 or any iteration of infinity over infinity, then we're going to use something called L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule says that if this happens where we get an indeterminate form, then we can take the limit of f prime of x and g prime of x and try direct substitu substitution again. And we can keep doing this as many times as you want until we get an actual limit, if the limit exists, of course. So, for example, we have limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 4x over 3x. The first thing you should try in any limit problem is direct substitution. So if I replace the x with a 0 on the numerator and denominator, I end up with sine of 0, which is 0 over 0, and that's indeterminate form. So because it's indeterminate, we can now use L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule says when we have an indeterminate form, let's try taking the limit of f prime of x and g prime of x, and then doing direct substitution uh, to see if that gives us a limit. So we have to find the derivative of the numerator, which is sine of 4x. Now, the derivative of sine is going to be cosine. But remember that any time uh, our parentheses contains any term other than x, we have to multiply by the derivative of that parentheses by the chain rule. So derivative of 4x is 4. So this gives you 4 cosine of 4x. So once again, the derivative of sine is going to be cosine. So we have cos 4x, but we have to multiply by 4 due to the chain rule. And then the derivative of 3x is just going to be 3. So f prime of x, which is the numerator, uh, the derivative of the numerator is going to be 4 cos 4x. And g prime of x, the derivative of the denominator is going to be 3. So we're going to re rewrite this as limit as x approaches 0 of 4 cosine of 4x over 3. And let's try direct substitution again. So this time I replace the x with 0, so I get 4 co uh, times cosine of 0 over 3. Cosine of 0 is 1, and so this gives us 4 thirds as the answer. Here's another example. Suppose that f of 8 is equal to 0, g of 8 is equal to 0, g f prime of 8 is equal to negative 3, and g prime of 8 is equal to 1. We want to find the limit as x approaches 8 of f of x over g of x. So remember, whenever we have a limit, first do direct substitution. So if I replace the x with 8, then what I'm going to get is the limit as x approaches 8 of f of 8 over g of 8. Now f of 8 and g of 8 are both equal to 0, which makes it indeterminate. So when that happens, we can use L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule says that this limit is going to be equivalent to the limit as x approaches 8 of f prime of x over g prime of x. So let's try replacing x with 8 again. So we have f prime of 8 over g prime of 8. That's negative 3 over 1, which is just negative 3. Okay, next we have the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the x minus 1 over sine of 14x. Once again, first step is always going to be direct substitution. So if I do direct substitution, I replace the x with 0, I get e to the 0 minus 1 over sine of 14 times 0. Anything e to the 0 power or anything to 0 power is always 1. So we get 1 minus 1, which is 0, over sine of 0 is always also going to be 0, and that's indeterminate. So we need to find the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. So for the numerator, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, and then 1 is a constant, so we can just cross that out. For sine of 14x, just like the two examples before this, um, sine has a derivative of cosine, so we have cosine of 14x, but the parentheses contain something that's not x, so we have to multiply by the derivative of the parentheses, which will be 14. This gives you 14 cosine of 14x. So now we have our f prime of x, which is e to the x, our g prime of x, which is 14 cos 14x, and now let's try direct substitution. So if I replace the x with 0 in each case, I'm going to get e to the 0, which is 1, and then 14 cosine of 14 times 0. 14 times 0 is 0, and cos 0 is 1, so this gives us 1 over 14.
Next, we have limit as x approaches 0 of 4 to the x minus 13 to the x over x. Uh, let's first try direct substitution. So if we do direct substitution, we get 4 to the 0 minus 13 to the 0, which is 1 minus 1 over 0, and that's going to be indeterminate. So when it's indeterminate, we can now take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator and then try direct substitution again. So on the numerator, remember that if you have d dx of a to the x, that gives you a to the x times ln of a. Okay, so in our case, we take the, dd, uh, the derivative d dx of 4 to the x minus 13 to the x. So both of these are in this format of a to the x. So its derivative is going to be a to the x, which is going to be 4 to the x times the natural log of 4 minus, same format, 13 to the x will be a to the x times ln of a, which is where a is the base. So 13 to the x times the natural log of 13. And then for the, deriv the, the denominator, the derivative is just equal to 1. So now let's try direct substitution again. Uh, so this derivative by L'Hopital's rule is equal to the limit as x sub to 0 of 4 to the x times ln 4 minus 13 to the x ln 13. And it's divided by 1, but because it's divided by 1, I'm not going to write that. Um, if I do direct substitution and I plug this all into Desmos, I'm going to get ln of 4 minus ln of 13, or you can write that as a decimal as well. Just remember that 4 to the 0 and 13 to the 0 are both equal to 1, because anything to the 0 power is equal to 1. All right, and then last example, we have limit as x approaches pi over 2 of uh, 9 cos 5x times secant of negative 9x. Well, let's first do direct substitution. But remember, secant is the um, reciprocal of cosine. So I'm going to write this as 9 cosine of 5x divided by cosine of negative 9x. So secant is 1 over cosine, so it goes to the denominator. Now, if I replace each x with pi over 2, I'm going to get 0 over 0, which is indeterminate, because cosine of 5, 5, 5 pi over 2, and then... Um, cosine of negative 9 pi over 2 is going to be 0. And where am I getting these 5 pi over 2 and 9 pi over 2 from? Well, x is pi over 2, so 5 times pi over 2 is 5 pi over 2, and negative 9 times pi over 2 is negative 9 pi over 2. That makes it indeterminate. So let's find the, the derivative of uh, the numerator and the derivative of the denominator. So for the numerator, we have 9 cos 5x. So cosine has a derivative of negative sine, but because we have a parenthesis that contains a term that's not x, we have to multiply by the derivative of that parenthesis according to the chain rule, and that'll be 5. So I have negative 45 sine of 5x. Here, we have just a cosine of negative 9x, so the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and then for negative 9x, we multiply by the derivative of that, which is negative 9. Negative times a negative is positive, and we get 9 sine of negative 9x. Let's see if this works. So now, I have limit of negative 45 sine of 5x over 9 sine of negative 9x. I replace each of the x's with pi over 2. So once again, 5 times pi over 2 is 5 pi over 2. Negative 9 times pi over 2 is negative 9 pi over 2. Plug these into a calculator. Make sure your calculator is in radian mode when you plug these in. And this will give you sine of 5 pi over 2 and sine of negative 9 pi over 2 are both 1. So we get negative 45 over negative 9, which is just equal to 5. Uh, you know, I take it back. Sine of negative pi over 2 is negative 1, which is why we get a negative 9 on the denominator. Okay, so this, again, and again, if you put this into decimals or a scientific calculator, you'll get the right answer, but this will give you a negative 1, which makes it into a negative 9. And that's it.